Hello. Ah, good to be here. Just happy to not be on my phone, I gotta be honest. I know I'm addicted to it. I know, I know I'm addicted to it because I can tell by how upset and how jealous I get with women and how supportive of each other you are on Facebook. Do you know what I'm talking about when the new profile photo goes up and the supportive female friend mafia descends on the comment section? It's like, OMG, you look gorgeous. Yes, queen, 27 exclamation points. And then everyone's got a top and it's like, I literally can't even. And that hand clap emoji one, like, you are a goddess. But I think it's like an emergency room. And it's like, call the paramedics, I'm dying. Siren emojis. As a dude, that is not my Facebook experience. I can post a photo of LeBron James and the Loch Ness Monster finding that missing Malaysian airplane. One comment from my uncle asking me to call him. No, flag is inappropriate, I don't even know why. Uh, it's probably fine though, because I'm bad at taking compliments. Like whenever someone tells me they like a piece of clothing I'm wearing, I feel the need to tell them how little I spent on it. It's very important to me that people know how cheap I am. <laughs> so I'll be like, oh, that sweater's really cool. I'll be like, oh, there's a hole in it. I got the Salvation Army, only 10 bucks. Look at me. Which is a strange thing to do, because I don't do this with other stuff in my life. And, like someone's like, hey, your girlfriend's really cool. I'm like, oh yeah, low self-esteem. I got her at AA. <laughs> yeah, daddy issues, look at me. I get jealous of black dudes because they can wear jewelry. It's true, a black dude can wear jewelry, looks cool, he's got swag. Put on a gold chain, he looks awesome. I put on a gold chain, I just look like a Macedonian sex trafficker. You're like, who brought the villain from Taken? Why is he here? I'm like, the main villain? They're like, nah, the one who gets killed at the construction site, the first one, yeah. I'm like, awesome, all right. <laughs> but I'm trying to be more woke, figure stuff out. It's kind of tough, though, you know? Like, it's weird to me that you're enlightened if you say people of color, but you're a bigot if you say colored people. Those are the same words, we just switch the order. You know, like, I'm Jewish, someone came up to me, he's like, you're a filthy Jew. I wouldn't be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm a Jew of filth, <laughs> all right? I'm gonna switch those words around, get woke. I'm gonna post about this on the Book of Face, watch out. But yeah, I don't know if you guys know this, old Jews, very competitive with black people about who's been more oppressed. Big competition. I remember I was watching that movie, 12 Years a Slave, the opening credits are on, my grandma walks through the room, looks at the screen, she's like, 12 years, huh? <laughs> no, no, 12's a lot for some people. It's no 200 years in the desert, but you make do. So that's my fictional grandma. <laughs> Yeah, Trump's America now. It's crazy, the first thing he ever said is that Mexico is sending all their drug dealers and rapists to America. Mexico is sending all of their drug dealers and rapists to America. Yeah, have you seen who we sent to Cancun? <laughs> Not exactly the cream of the crop that we're exporting south of the border, you know? Kind of surprised Mexico doesn't demand a wall. They're like, you got to build a wall. We'd be like, why? Because like, you keep sending us lacrosse players from Penn State named Connor. <laughs> We all take Molly and listen to Tiesto and do body shots at Senior Frogs. It's fucking annoying. Like, I'm sorry, Mexico. You have a good point. But I think my favorite thing that Trump said, my favorite thing of all, was that press conference was like, I had the biggest margin of victory of anyone since Ronald Reagan. And the reporter stood up like two minutes later. He's like, yeah, everyone since Ronald Reagan had a bigger margin of victory than you. Trump's like, well, that's what someone told me. <laughs> That's what someone told me? Can we all do this now? Like if I'm cheating on my girlfriend, she catches me and she's like, what are you doing? Like I thought we were allowed to do that. She's like, no. I'm like, well, that's what someone told me. <laughs> Sources are saying we have an open relationship. She's like, no, we don't. Like, well, fake news, fake news. <laughs> Strikes again. That was not a hand job. That was an alternative handshake, all right? <laughs> New York City, we're all doing it. Expensive town, though. Expensive town. I remember I was at a fancy restaurant recently. They had a $27 hamburger on the menu. 
only way hamburger should cost twenty-seven dollars if it's stuffed with fifteen dollars. That's the only way those numbers add up. You know, it's one of these places where the waiter has to give you a whole spiel. You know, it's like, have you ever dined with us before? Because we do things a little bit differently around here. Yeah, so the portions may be smaller than you used to, so you may want to order more than you typically do. Now, how can I start you off with sparkling still or <clears throat> tap? I don't like any part of that, mostly because I can't do it in my life. You know, I can't be hooking up with a girl for the first time and be like, yeah, have you ever had sex with me before? Because we do things a little bit differently around here. Yeah, the portions may be smaller than you used to. So you may want to bring a vibrator, you may. Now, how can I disappoint you first? Fiscally, sexually, or uh, emotionally? That disappointment you're feeling, it's 100% organic, okay? 